There's a very old saying that is corroborated in the Western world every morning of the 25th of December. The only thing that's worse than not getting what you want is getting what you want. We think that in buying our children gifts, we are helping them. We are doing the opposite of harming them. But how many of us remember, if we did Christmas at home, which a lot of us in the West do, uh, do still, what it felt like as a kid when you got everything you wanted for Christmas? Oftentimes, you were, you were as a little child somewhat mystified and dumbfounded to find out that it didn't feel as good as you thought it was going to be. You were deflated once it happened. Why is that? Has the uh, child been harmed by his parents when they attempted to uh, fulfill the child's desires, the child's will, the child's need? Um, one would assume then that not fulfilling the child's need or desire would be helping. Now I understand the kind of absurd loop that this puts us into, um, and of course it goes back to that old uh, thing about need. But the problem is though, um, harm and need are very intimately intertwined. Um, David Benatar says in his book, we infrequently contemplate the harms that await any newborn child, pain, disappointment, anxiety, grief, and death. Disappointment is a harm. Okay, if disappointment, anxiety, pain, grief, and death are harms, what is the opposite of harm? In fact, I won't even ask what is the opposite of harm. I would like to ask if someone can tell me what harm is. I don't want any rhetorical answer here. I don't want anyone to tell me that, um, that uh, being tortured brutally or raped or whatever is harm. I want someone to tell me not what harm looks like, but what harm actually is. What is this very thing we call Harm. Why is it that disappointing someone is harmful and doing the opposite of disappointing them, i.e. what they want to have done, harmful as well? How, how can we tell here? The reason why I think that this um, issue is so important is I think that Mr. Benatar, and generally speaking, um, the Western world, has gotten sloppy in its definitions of harm and evil and all that sort of thing. I think that we've forgotten what harm actually is. And what it has done is this, this um, vacuum that's been created by a refusal and even a fear of looking at what harm actually is. And I do mean actual fear to the point of cowardice, to the point of refusing to engage in a debate that uh, insists upon a clear definition of harm the only answer that we ever get is usually rhetorical and emotional. The fact that we are incapable of honestly facing the subject of harm and defining what harm actually is, is what has left the wide open gap that pseudo-philosophers like David Benatar can walk straight into. What is harm. It is ultimately, as I hinted, a frightening thought, and you need courage to pursue that line of inquiry. What is harm? I um, have something that is somewhat related to that, um, in an elliptical kind of way, in an oblique kind of way. I've got a link to a painting in 
the bottom here in my links bar. And to see where I'm going with this idea of harm, I'd like to um, ask people who look at this. There's two main components to this painting. Which side of this painting or which main component in this painting is your eye instinctively drawn towards and why? Thank you.